Welcome to Hope United Methodist virtual church service. My name is Jason Weir. I am one of the lay speakers for Hope United Methodist Church. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel Alsh. I am the music director of Hope United Methodist Church. This week, Pastor Mike has been called away on a family emergency, so Jason and I are taking care of service today, and we hope that you can be in praise and worship with us. I want to direct your attention to our Facebook page so you can look at our wonderful VBS program that our youth leaders and ministry directors put together uh, for children and for adults who are child at heart. And we would also ask that you check out the Facebook page and your email for any announcements in the next coming days and weeks. Let us come together for our call to worship. You have come from afar and waited long and are weary. Let us sit side by side, sharing the same source to quiet the same hunger that makes us weak. Then, standing together, let us share the same spirit, the same thoughts that once again draw us together in friendship and unity and peace. Let us sing our first song.
Let us join our hearts in the opening prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. O God, source of all that makes life possible, giver of all that makes life good, we gather to give you our thanks, yet we confess that we have often failed to live our thankfulness. What we have, we take for granted, and we grumble about what we lack. We have squandered your bounty with little thought of those who will come after us. We are more troubled by the few who have more than by the many who have less. Forgive us, O oh God, in this hour of worship, accept our thanksgiving, and teach us to make gratitude in sharing our way of life the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We want to take this moment to thank you for all of your offerings to the church, which helps us to continue all of our um, daily church ministries. Um, for your offerings, you can either mail them in, or slide them underneath the church office door. They gathered twelve baskets of leftovers. 
about 5,000 were fed. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. So as I said, Pastor Mike is not here today due to an unfortunate family emergency. So I've agreed to step in to help out last minute. And as the scripture was already chosen for today, I figured I would use it and do my own short sermon so that Pastor Mike can still do his at a later date. That way, you get two sermons on the same passage from two different viewpoints. This being said, as it is a well-known passage about the miracle Jesus performed of feeding over 5,000 people with only five loaves and two fish, I would like to look at the beginning of this scripture, and I feel it is very often overlooked. In order for me to do that, though, we need to go back in scripture a little bit first. The news that Jesus had heard, as referenced in the very beginning of today's scripture, is that of the beheading of John the Baptist ordered by King Herod. From the relationship that Jesus and John the Baptist had, as portrayed in even earlier scriptures, I can only assume that this news had troubled Jesus, and that is why he tried to leave in order to be alone. I'm sure many of us have done very similar. When we have just had one of those days at work, when people have let you down or did something that hurt you, or when you have received terrible news. Don't we tend to want to be left alone for a bit? We don't want to talk about it. Jesus was the same way at this point. While he is the Son of God and he was only on this and he was also on this earth as a human among us, with human emotions, feeling sorrow at the news of the death of his friend. So he left to try and be alone. But it did not work. Jesus was spotted and his location revealed. So, naturally, people came to gather around him. This is where we really get to see some of Jesus' love and compassion and what separates him as God's son from us. When Jesus saw the masses of people coming, even though he wanted to be left alone, he had compassion and pity for them instead of being angry and decided to heal their sick. How many of us can honestly say we would do the same? When all we want is to be left alone for a time being and people start coming to you with their problems, how many of us would put aside our selfish feelings to help others, especially people we don't know? I will be first to admit that there have been many times when I have shut myself out from others, even in their times of need, because I was beside myself and was being selfish. Jesus, on the other hand, put aside his troubles to help others, to heal the sick and, among God, and be among God's children, and eventually feed the masses with only five loaves and two fish. We need to take heed to not get caught up in our own lives too much, that we forget to spread the love and compassion of God to others. And by spreading God's love and compassion, it may come back around to heal us of whatever is causing us pain. Many times I like to read and think about a quote from Robin Williams. He states, I think the saddest people always try their hardest to make people happy because they know what it's like to feel absolutely worthless and they don't want anyone else to feel like that. While Robin Williams was talking more about depression in this quote, I feel it can be held true in many situations in life. In a way, this is about referring to the sympathetic nature we have as humans. We feel sympathy for others when we see them struggling with something that we ourselves have struggled with because we understand the pain. And so, we many times will go out of our way to help those people, to make them feel better and help them through their trying times. 
This is the example that Jesus had laid out before us. This is why Jesus was able to set aside his trials of the news of his friend John the Baptist. He saw the pain in the faces of his father's children and wanted to make them feel better. As Christians, we are supposed to help those in need whenever we are able to, no matter of our own trials. We are sent forth to be God's hands and feet, spreading his love and compassion through action, just as Jesus had done when he walked this earth among us. There will be many trials that we will still need to overcome, as our lives as Christians was never promised to be an easy life. But we need to remember that through acts of love and kindness, we in return shall receive the same. Amen. Now we'll sing our next song, Hallelujah. Be God's hands and feet and show his love and compassion. <laughs> 